हरे कृष्ण जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन्ना वल्लभ किरी बदधारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जमुना चीरा बन छारी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री बासदी गौर भक्त वृंद जय चैतन्य हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Shila Prabhu Padaki. Thank you, everybody, for coming and attending this Sankirtan movement, known as ISKCON, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Today, in the Western, I don't know if they did they celebrate in India Father's Day? No, not yet. Soon, huh? Now they do everything. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, it's very good. So I'd like to go through Bhagavad Gita, and you will see how to understand this concept of father through the Vedic scriptures. Of course, in general, all fathers. All fathers, they have a uh, a duty to perform. In Vedic culture, everybody has a duty. Men have duties. Women have duties. Children have duties. Everybody has prescribed duties. That is the meaning of civilized human life. So, for a father, the father is the maintainer. And protector of the family. That is his main functions. The father should be the example, following the example of the original fathers, as we will find out. We follow the example of the original fathers. So, before we go any further, let's invoke auspiciousness. By chanting the powerful twelve-syllable mantra that was given by Narada to Dhruva Maharaj and other devotees, Chitraketu, and our Shila Prabhupad, our spiritual father for this movement. He's another father for everyone. When you come to this movement, Shila Prabhupad becomes. Your spiritual father. So he always began his lectures. Please repeat: Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate 
वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया so now we have created a spiritual environment you can hear the tambora it's okay that's also there to bring about a nice spiritual environment shanti 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 yes no i need them because oh okay oh i need them otherwise i don't get a good video okay so in bhagavad gita in the fourth chapter as the fourth chapter begins we hear this verse shri bhagavan uvacha imang vivaspate yogam proktavan aham avyayam विभस्वान मन बे प्राह मानो इक्षवाक बे ब्रबिट प्लीज रिपीट द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण सेड आई इंस्ट्रक्टेड दिस इम्पेरिशेबल साइंस ऑफ योगा टू द सन गॉड विभस्वान and vivaswan instructed it to manu the father of mankind and manu in turn instructed it to ikshvaku so manu in the material creation there are 14 manus appearing in one day of lord brahma and you can then calculate brahma lives for a hundred years according to his time calculation so there are thousands of manus but besides being the father of mankind manu gives us the prescribed rules and regulations how to live properly as a human being indeed uh, there are 10 subject matters in the shrimad bhagavatam one of them is that manu gives the prescribed rules and regulations for mankind so any father has to be a representative of manu by living life according to the rules and regulations of the scriptures and our father shrila prabhupad recommends he writes this in his introduction any i urge all of you when you get a chance read prabhupad's introduction to bhagavad gita that introduction to bhagavad gita gives you a nice summary of what is bhagavad gita so i urge you please read that introduction to bhagavad gita so the best book to understand what is vedic philosophy is shrimad bhagavad gita prabhupad mentions this he says that we don't have time to read all the vedic literatures because there are 108 upanishads 18 puranas there's the vedanta sutra there's the shrimad bhagavatam there are itihasas the ramayan the mahabharat the four vedas thousands and thousands of verses so prabhupada says probably for most of us we don't have enough time to read all of them but if you just read one book that will suffice because bhagavad gita is the essence of all the vedic scriptures and those of us who study prabhupada's books daily we see 
So often, Prabhupada in his Bhaktivedanta purports quotes from Bhagavad Gita. I like to preach that it is the foundation of all preaching. That if you know Bhagavad Gita, then you can go anywhere and preach this philosophy nicely. So now, also in chapter 4, Krishna explains how he is a kind of a father. So, here's this verse. Chatur vanyang maya sristang guna karma vibhagasha tasya kattaram apimam vidya akkattaram avyayam I beg you to please repeat. According to the three modes of material nature and the work associated with them, the four divisions of human society are created by me. And although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer being unchangeable. So, there's one word, kartaram. And in the synonyms, Prabhupada translates kartaram as the father. So, the daiva varnashram, the institution that Krishna himself created, not the modern day caste system in India, that we don't accept. But the Daiva Varnashram that human society should follow based on training and culture, not by birth, but by training and culture. That system, that was created by God. And Krishna says, yes, I am the father of that system. Just like we all know, you have windows, you have um, Apple, there's, they've created systems, right? So Krishna has created a system called the Daiva Varnasram. How human society should be divided according to ashram and according to uh, one's occupation. But again, not based on birth, but by training. For instance, myself, by birth, I am less than Shudra. But because I've been accepted by my spiritual father, Srila Prabhupada, and I have agreed to live my life according to certain rules and regulations, because I have accepted that culture, then now I have become Vaishnava, which transcends being a Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaisha, Shudra. When you come to Krishna consciousness and agree to be trained, that's this whole process of Krishna consciousness, is a daily training. We are all apprentices in the medieval ages young boy would go to a master to learn a certain craft or technique. So we are also apprentices. We are being trained up in a system. The goal of that system is to become a pure lover of God. And that requires training. So in this movement, there is training how to become a pure lover of God. The spiritual master, he is the father and the mother Vedic scriptures. At the time of initiation, one is reborn. We have our material father and mother that gave us birth. In India, you all know that the parents are the first guru, correct? Every Indian family knows that. The 
Birth parents are the first guru. But then you take second birth. That makes you Dwija, twice born. And that second birth is by spiritual master and mother Vedas. So that's why on initiation you get a new name. When these children were born, a name was, they didn't select their name. Their parents decided your name will be such and such. So when you're born again by the spiritual master and the scriptures, you get a new name. That means that old name is gone, finish. That material life, adios amigo. No, you get a new birth. Now you are Dravidda Das. Nirantara Das. Everybody's a Das. And I'm not talking about the ancient operating system. No. Everybody becomes Das or Dasi, the feminine. That means everyone sees him or herself as the servant of 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 God which we are going to get to a little while but here we understand that the original Daiva Varnashram was created the father of that system is God himself Krishna now in chapter 9 of Bhagavad Gita one line please repeat Pitaham Asya Jagato. I am the father of this universe. So here is another indication from Krishna how he is father. He is father of this universe. Now, in chapter 11, those of you who know, how many people? Read Bhagavad Gita on a daily basis. Ooh, very, keep your hands up. Then you get bells. Very good. Everybody should be reading Bhagavad Gita on a daily basis so that you become stout and strong in your spiritual life. Just like if you fast one day, two days, three days, what happens? You get weaker and uh, all right like on John Mastami right it's two o'clock oh my god it's only two o'clock I've been fasting all day I don't know how much longer I can go on then you think oh it it must be but it's only three o'clock oh my god so by fasting you become weak so don't fast your soul. Your soul needs nourishment. And what is that nourishment? Hearing and chanting about Krishna. Just like right now, you're feeding your soul. Why? You're hearing the message of Godhead. And Krishna in your heart is smiling on you right now. Why is he smiling on you? Because Vidhu Noti Satam. Krishna is very pleased with us when he sees, oh, you're hearing my message? Very good. I bless you. I cleanse from your heart evil desires, material consciousness. So go on hearing this lecture now. Because as you're hearing, Krishna is cleaning your heart. He's happy with you. Look at Krishna right now. Is he not smiling? Is he not glowing beautifully? Yes, because devotees have come. We did nice kirtan. We are hearing the message of his message. So Krishna is happy. So when Arjuna in chapter 11 sees the universal form it's described Sanjaya describes to Dhritarashtra what Arjuna saw thousands of heads 
thousands of faces and bellies and arms. And there was this scene. All the Kauravas were entering the mouth of the universal form, smashed within his teeth. And there were odors and colors, so many things going on. And Arjuna, he asked the universal form, Who are you? What is your mission? And the universal form replied, I am time, and I have come to destroy everything. But you, Arjuna, I want you to be my instrument in the fight. So after that, Arjuna offered beautiful prayers to the uh, universal form. And in one of those prayers, one line again, please repeat. Pitasi lokasya characharasya. Please repeat. You are the father of this complete cosmic manifestation of the moving and non moving. So Arjuna had that realization that yes, Krishna, you told me in chapter 9. You are the father of the universe. And now I am seeing, by seeing this universal form, I have that same realization. This whole cosmic manifestation, those that are moving and not everything, you are the father. Now we get to chapter 14. More direct information. In chapter 14, two verses, one after the other. Mabayonir Mahad Brahma Tasmin Garbang Dadam Yaham Sambhava Sarvabhutanang Tato Bhavati Bharata Can I ask you one more time to repeat? Please. The total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth and it is that Brahman that I impregnate making possible the births of all living beings O son of Bharat so believe it or not this verse is actually indicating Lord Shiva because when there is a creation all the conditioned souls are in the body of Mahavishnu. And when there is a time for creation, Mahavishnu glances at the material energy, Durga Devi. And with that glance, all the living entities that were in the body of Mahavishnu enter the material energy. But that glance is actually Lord Shambhu. He's the one. So that Mahavishnu glances and that glance takes the form of Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva can also be considered our father because he's the one that injects all the conditioned souls into the womb of material nature. And Hindu people know this. They worship Durga and Shambhu as mother and father. And from this angle of vision, they are correct. Yes, we can accept Lord Shiva as the father based on this description. That Mahavishnu glanced, that glance took the form of Lord Shiva. Combined with Goddess Durga, we enter the material world. Now, in the next verse, Krishna clarifies something. Sarva yoni shukanteya, murtaya sambhavantiya, tasang brahma mahad yonir, ahang bija prada pita. One more time. It should be understood 
that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the seed giving father. So, in the previous verse, I mentioned how the living entities who were not fit to go back to Godhead, who remained in the material world, sleeping inside of Mahavishnu, they are injected into the womb of material nature by Shambhu, Lord Shiva. But it did not say where the living entities actually come from. Here it's clear. Ahang bija prada pita. Krishna is saying, all of us, we come from Him. And that is going to come also in the next verse that I quote. So this line, ahang, please, ahang bija prada pita. This is very important to understand that we come from Krishna. We are all God's children. That means from that angle of vision, we're all equal. Some of us have male bodies, female bodies.